And joining us now from Virginia is Danny Davis. He is the Defense Priorities Senior Fellow and Military Expert. Danny, welcome to Fine Print. Thanks for having me. What do you think may be causing the Russians to retreat? And is there any reason for Ukraine to celebrate or they need much more time? Well, th well there's no question that this is a tremendous victory for Ukraine. Uh, we just do have to keep in mind kind of the context here. And it's, it's so far a significant tactical victory, but it certainly doesn't indicate that the war is anywhere near being over uh, because the, the progress that Ukraine has made has been, uh, you know, I, I think somewhere around 50 to 60 uh, linear kilometers uh, toward the east. And, and so uh, Russia has been driven back, but they've only been driven back partially of the ways, and there's still a lot of fighting to go on. But really, there's, there's no way you can say anything besides this is a tremendous success for Ukraine, really the first one since, uh, I guess, March, when they, when they forced Russia to leave north of Kiev. Uh, but this, in some ways, is even bigger than that because the Russians were not prepared for it. They were completely caught by surprise, and they have suffered uh, some fairly significant casualties as they have moved out. Danny, when we say that uh, there's a potential breakthrough in this war, who takes the credit, Ukraine or Russia? Well, see, I don't think there's been a breakthrough yet. This has been a, a, a tactical move. Uh, and this doesn't signal the war is coming to an end any more than it did when Ukraine was driven out of Mariupol and then several Donetsk and then Lysychansk. Those were all big hits against Ukraine, but they stiffened up. And then now that they have launched a counterattack, we can expect almost certainly the same thing is going to happen with Russia. Once they have absorbed this hit, they're now forming new lines. And then I would almost certainly guess within the coming weeks, they'll launch their own uh, counterattack. But the fact is they still have somewhere around 20% of Ukrainian territory, and there's a long way to go before this thing's over, I'm afraid. Danny, finally, after months of the war and various developments uh, coming in from Ukraine and also Russia, where do you think this war is headed, and do you think it will change the tide? Well, you know, I think the, the, the next big thing to watch for is what's going to happen in the winter. I, I think probably Russia is... is going to solidify their lines. I doubt that Ukraine has much striking power left to continue to move farther uh, east in the Kharkov region. And as you may know, in their Kherson offensive uh, about uh, at the end of August, 1st of September, that was a pretty significant failure. They, they lost a lot of troops and didn't gain much territory at all. Russia handled that one well. But as we get into the, to the fall and then into the winter, uh, there's going to be some real problems with energy in Europe. And, and with the, the cost of living going up and the, the problems on the economy of Europe as a result of the sanctions on, on Russia, on their gas and oil. And the question is going to come, can the West maintain its stability and its uniform support of Ukraine? Or do the, does the cost start to cause some of the populations in the West to say, hey, we're not going to pay a price for this and, and demand some kind of change from their government? Mm -hmm. Right now, we don't know. The governments are all saying we're going to be firm and we're not going to change our support. But that remains to be seen when the price comes in, uh, in the winter. Live from Virginia, Donnie Davis, thank you very much for giving us time and for talking to we on today.